We begin the card of Dab, we set this mighty cut in Dab Ches, we begin several lines down at the top of the Yamud, but the Gemara is in the middle of the, discussing the teaching that was related to Allah of our Mishnah, that Rameyr said a Chiddush, that uh, one can look at the Nega, Lahaka, Vulay Lahachma, when it comes to the Allah of this Mesechta, that of Chal and the Gemara brought like similarly by a Chasen, and the Gemara brought a source, and the Gemara continues elaborating on that source, that there are certain days that you will look, or let's say, uh, look only leaning, and in certain days that you're not going to look. I should go back to the Kasek and Cheska, turn it down, turn it down, Daf Chemshin, for joining us today's Daf. Some of this is discussing today's Daf are Chol Amoy, various activities that are permitted or forbidden on Chol Amoy, including Malak and Abdem Atmos of the Imoy, gathering one's parents' bones to bury them in the family plot, Yo'ayr Adam al Mesa bi Espedena, arousing mourning for a relative or eulogizing them within 30 days before Yom Tif, Chayven Kuchin bi Kvodes Bemoy, digging burial plots, uh, either tombs or in the ground, the or in the Mameis B'chatzah, to build a coffin, specifically if the mess is there, and Nisim Nashim, regarding the Allah of marrying on Chol HaShemoy. To begin the current daft, Tav Ches, seven lines down at the top of the Yaman, where the Gemara quotes from what we mentioned on the previous daft, Omar, we said that, Yesh Yoim Shatter Boy, from the word Uva Yoim Hiroiz Boy, and we said, what's the Uva Yoim, which is the extra Bob, as the Gemara is going to explain, What's that and um, that day? That Yeshim uh, there are certain days that you will look at the Nega, and Yeshim Shadarai by the certain days you're not going to look at it. That was related to Allah of a previous staff of the Mishnah, and on Chalosh and by a Chasen, we're not going to look. We want Simcha then, and it's going to cause Tsar. So, you know, my mash, what, what do you see from the Pasuk of Yom Hiroiz Boy? It just says on the day that you see the Nega, and you'll declare it as it's a, 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 a Tsaras. Where do you see? So, I'm a biased because in Kane of Tesla, Kane's Lech the Brahman, the Big Yom, should have said in the day. My uva yom bevav. Shema min no yesh yom shatter lo yibay. The extra bevav comes to tell you, and in that day, which is telling you that because there is a day that you look at it, yesh yom shatter lo yibay. The certain day that you're not going to look at it, like the halacha of our mishnah of chelus shemay. That's one source. Rabba Amar, which places points out that Rabba agrees to the darshan of the bevav, but he's just saying that even if not, kulakra. Really, it's the whole pasuk, but meaning the whole word of the yom heroiz. Is 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 the seir who's extra? Why? Because the mkain of that's the case that every single time you see the neg, you have to see it and you have to declare it as tamo. So lech the brachman ubehirais. It should have just said and when he shows him the nega, my ubayoyim. What's and the day? What does that have to do with the day? Ah, shema mino. We confirm from that. Yes, yoyim shatero yeboy because it depends on the day. Certain days that he will look at it. Yes, shemshiatero, but certain days he's not going to look at it. Says the Gemara vabaya. He would tell you it's not true. He said it's specifically from the Va, but the word Bayoim is not extra because Hakumi Bayoim, that you need for a different drasha. Bayoim, Rul Balayim, that you can only look at the neck at night, at daytime, not at nighttime. So the Mabrava, that is already using the whole word, not just the Va. He's using Bayoim to tell you this drasha, that certain days yes, certain days not. So Bayoim, Rul Balayim, and all So where does he actually know that the neck has to be seen only at daytime, not at nighttime? He says, Yimon Nafka, he learns that from a different Pasik, Mayikra. It says, M'lechol ma'ri ina kain. Where it talks about from the whole vision of the eyes of the kain. That's what it has to be shown. So you see that it sounds like a daytime when he could see, because he has to be able to see. That's how you know it can't be a nighttime. It's like, Babaya, I'm boiling. No, he needs that positive for something else. It's excluding if, let's say, he's blind in one of his eyes. So it's not L'chol ma'ri ina kain. That's what the positive would exclude. I'm not saying that, that that has to be daytime that you have to be able to see, because then he knows from the other Pasik. <coughs> but for Rava, it says, mm-hmm. He also needs L'chol Mari in the Kain to tell you that it's excluding a person who's blind to one eye. How can you learn that from L'chol Mari in the Kain that it has to be a daytime, not a nighttime? So you must say, you're right. He has to learn that to exclude a blind to one eye from this Pasik. So for Ella, so we're back to the question, but Yimbo Label Adam and where does he know that the uh, looking at the Nege has to be a daytime, not a nighttime, because he doesn't learn it out from. By Ubayim, because he, he learns he, he learns out um, <coughs> something else from, from that Pasik, which is this halacha of certain days you see, certain days you don't see. So since he went after he learns out from a different Pasik. Mikinega nearly babayas. What happens is it says that the person who has a nega in his house, he tells the kind, he tells him, like a nega, it appears to me in my house. What does it mean lead to me? It means lead below. <coughs> it means to me with unassisted, without any light. Meaning he doesn't need the light of the candle, which is during the daytime. And it's in that time that it says in the subsequent Pasik, Uvaha Kain. 
And that's when the Kohen is going to come and he's going to see it and declare it as dark. So obviously that the uh, vision has to be, the looking at it has to be during the daytime. That's how he knows that it has to be day, not at nighttime. The word Lee. For, to me, and not from, I only I can see with my bare eyes and not with some assistance from, from any light. It says, Gevar Bavavaya, he would tell you, no, Imi Hassan, if that's where you're learning at the source, but that passing is talking about Bavayas, as we just quoted. So, how many I would have said, how many when did we say this Allah? That it has to be unassisted, that you have to be able to see during the daytime is Tumma Dullah the Gufa, and maybe that's only Tumma not of the house, not of the body, meaning of a house. I was talking about the goof, but we're going to talk about this own body, which Allah was speaking about in the Mishnah. I feel a little irritated that that could even be assisted with some light, and therefore could even be at night time. Kamash Malan, that's what we're telling you, though, know, our passage that we said from the previous stop that we started with the other way. Uva yoim hado is boy. What's the word boy? Boy means in him, meaning to of the body. And that is what the passage says, Uva yoim. Yes, Yom Shatiroya, Yes, Yom Shatiroya, that's what Rabbi was saying. But Rabbi says no. From the Vav, he knows that. And from the word Bayoim, that's teaching us the Salacha of Bayoim, Rolla Belayo. <clears throat> See, I love the next Mishnah. Remeyer had said in the previous Mishnah, a leniency. He said that you could take a look at a nega of a person and you could choose only to say leniently. If you see it's going to be Tommy, you'll be silent. So that's what the Mishnah says. <laughs> Additionally, Rameh said another leniency in the laws of Chalamite. What's this leniency? A different halacha. Malakir Adam, a person could gather atmis ava the bones of his father and his mother, and he could bring it to somewhere else to bury it where the ancestral tomb of the family is. And the reason why he could do this is because this is a joy for him that he's bringing his parents' bones to the, the, the family plot. And he's not going to be in pain on Chalash That's a simple translation. We'll see in the Gemara or clarification. Rabbi Yisim, he says, no, you're not allowed to gather the bones of Chalash because it's able to It's a mourning for him. And a Chalash a person is not supposed to be mourning. Now, related halacha, if a person has a relative that passed away a month or two before the Yom Tiv, the halacha is, the person cannot awaken or arouse people regarding his relative who passed away, which I'm going to explain, that they used to have, like in Eretz Yisrael, like Sardana. This is like a profession that they would eulogize. So in other words, what it means to say is, they shouldn't be hiring a eulogizer to go to his relatives and say, no, cry. All those who are bitter, you know what happened, you know this person who passed away? <coughs> this, is your, this is your father, your, your mother, your, your uncle. Your, this is, so a person should not awaken people regarding his relative who passed away. And Malayas Bidena. Where if, let's say, his relative died with him 30 days before the Yom Tiv, he should not hire a eulogizer to eulogize. Kayim Lerego, before the Yom Tiv, which that's going on both halachas, of Leia Eirur and Leia Spedeno, the Gemara is going to explain what's the reason of 30 days, but 30 days before, you should not be hiring this um, saftin to go and make the shle- this, this uh, atzeres about this relative and, and have people get all worked up. Now, the Gemara first, regarding the opening halacha of our Mishnah, the Gemara says, Verminah. You might ask a contradiction of the following Bryce. The, the Mishnah at Sagar Meir says, you're allowed to gather the bones because it's a joy for you. <coughs> Problem is, the Bryce says, I'm a lucky, that's my salvi, but that is, if someone gathers the bones of his parents, he's transferring from where they're buried to somewhere else. Harizim is Abalim Kalyan. He has to mourn on them the whole day, which that's difficult on the Meir because he said it's a joy for the person. Here we've seen the Bryce say it's, it's a day of mourning. And but in the evening, you don't have to mourn on them anymore. And Bam Rav Chizzi said, A chiddush, I feel it's ruined like besadina. And even if it bundled in his kerchief, where he didn't even gather it, and he didn't even see them, he still has to mourn on them as long as they weren't buried. But one thing we see from the Bryce is, not like the way Mary says in the Mishnah. Mary says it's a simcha, but it's a day of mourning. It's like the kavura happened today. So Amabaye says, Ein so you have to actually read the wording of the Mishnah differently. You're reading it different. You have to say, Mimnesha simcha is a regular love, because the joy of the Yom Tiv is on him. In other words, because a person is so engaged in the Simcha of the Yom Tiv, he's not going to be so much in pain by gathering the bones of his father and his mother. I mean, you're right. Usually it's, a, it's an availus. It's like, you know, you're engaged in... Anytime you go to the, the cemetery, it's a, you know, it's a sad thing. And if the goes and chants the bones, it is availus. But, says the man, the reason why you're allowed to do it is because you're so happy. Mishra Simcha is a regular love. It's not going to diminish so much 
the simcha that you have, and if it's not going to be so problematic, yeah, we don't want you to be in, in a sad state on a chalish You're not going to be because you're so happy because the yamtim. So therefore, it's not so much uh, that's going to make you so sad. Now the Mishnah said, Lo yaral meisay. You shouldn't arouse people regarding the relative who passed away thirty days before the yamtim. Says the Mishnah, Lo yaral meisay. What does this mean that you shouldn't arouse people regarding the person who died? So Amar he says, Kadhadu sabdona b'marova. That when the eulogizer would go around in the West and Eretz Yisrael, Amr would say, "Yev kunimei, cry with him, call Maria Liba, all those who are bitter of the heart." That's forbidden to do thirty days before the Yom Tov, and that's what it means. Lo yoyer al meisay, don't arouse people regarding the person who died. And this is as the Mishnah said, "Koy mudegel shleishem yem." This is for a period of thirty days before the Yom Tov. Says Rabbi Meishner shleishem yem. What's significant about the thirty day period? So we have Kahana Amar Rabbi Yehuda Merav. He says, "Meisa." The story about the Mechel with an individual, Shekinus Mois Lao Tzurego. So he's scrimping and saving the Megayt Tzid Rebbe, the Megayt Tzid the Vaisa Migdash, the Yom Tiv. He was saving up money to go on the Oil Rego. It cost money, it wasn't so, you know, everything, lodgings and, and traveling. But then the eulogy that came and knows he's his business, he, he looks at the registry who died, he's going to go and make, and, you know, that's his Parnasa. He goes and he stands on this, the entry of this person's house. And his, his wife took all the money that he saved to go up at Oil Regal, but this mustn't like. And she gave it to the eulogizer. So this guy was prevented, he wasn't able to go up at Oil Regal. Because the wife took it and said, Oh, talk to our cousin or whatever, uncle, he passed away. We have to make a make a shleish, make a make a zaasida. But he said, at that time they said, But then you shouldn't arrest people regarding the dead. And you shouldn't eulogize him. Kind of regular shleishim him thirty days before the yomtiv because thirty days before the yomtiv, people are shleishim and darish, and you start preparing for the yomtiv. And so that's the money that you're saving to go be oil regal. If you're going to hire the eulogizer, it's then they're not going to have the money. You know, you always have to. Everyone has their their uh, checkbooks that are balanced, but you don't expect those other unexpected uh, expenses like like the saftin. You know, is a two thousand dollar for a good uh, husband. So that's one reason why they said 30 days before he lay around Mesa. Shmuel Amis says a different reason. As we continue down the base, he says, Lefisha in Hamis Mishtakech men alev shleishim yoy. He says, because the dead is not forgotten from the heart for a period of 30, 30 days. So, in other words, since you're not going to forget for 30 days, if you're going to you have a husband 30 days, less than 30 days before the Yomtiv, so you're going to come to be Masper on the Yomtiv because you didn't forget about him yet. So therefore, 30 days before, you're not going to be masked. <laughs> says the Imam Ibn now, what's in between these two interpretations of why 30 days before you lo yo'ayr al-meisa v'leis b'dena? Says the Imam Ibn difference between them is the Ka'ba v'chinam. If the masked is saying, eh, this one I'm doing for free. I'm starting out now, I'll give you a free hasbid. So according to the one that says it's the reason is because the money that's prepared to be oiled, I go, okay, if he's doing a free job, no problem. But according to the one that says, but the, uh, you're not going to forget about this for a period of 30 days, so even Bechinam, even for free, it's still going to be awesome because the Mitten Yomtiv, you're going to be, oh, Taki, he gave this, he really put it out, this, this Masbid, and it's, it's going to bring Tsar to the person. I'll tell you something interesting. It says, generally, when it comes to Isser, meaning prohibitory law, when it's Machlik, Rav, and Shmuel, like we have over here, that Allah is like Rav, that therefore, if you're doing it for free, you could have a husband 30 days before Yom There's no problem about spending the, all the Yom Tiv money on the Masbid. But moreover, it says, it says even according to Shmuel, it says, Asa 30 days before, even for free, because you're not going to forget it. It says a very interesting psychological idea. It says the Isra would only be by a Saftin, by a professional eulogizer. But the person himself is permitted, because Yosem is apik mitzaro. He's more going to ex- remove his pain al by screaming and crying and being masked our relative and be yisamech lachasman. He's actually going to be happier at a later point in time. So if I cared from what he, what he was saying, when the masked is there, so it's going to sit on him. But if he himself gets up there and he talks to the zebra and he's masked his relative, yes, he could do that within 30 days because actually it's going to remove the pain from his heart. And come down to, huh, he's, he's already, he already has uh, to a state of simcha. Here I look at the next Mishnah. Then related discussion regarding burial. It says the Mishnah in Chayifrin Kuchin beKvaris b'Mor. In Allah to dig, uh, Kuchin and Kvaris, which we can explain what they are. Uh, these are different types of burial uh, plots for the dead. Which the way the Mafarish explains it, says some say even if the person did die, but Mafarish explains that they, they they used to dig 
these catacombs <laughs> and, these, and these graves, to have them prepared for people that are going to die. Of course, it's, a, a, it's, it's something that you, you don't have time always to dig a new grave. And you cannot do that on Chalamayim because that's a terrible Yisraeli and we don't let on Chalamayim uh, overly exerting oneself. But you could inaugurate a catacomb, which is a certain type of a grave, on Chalamayim. Which I'm going to explain exactly what does that mean. Bison the Vrech is you're allowed to make a pool, uh, like a little pond that's used for laundry, because that's not so, 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 it doesn't require so much effort to make that pool. Which tries to point out, he says, what do you mean? Why would you be able to do it on Maid, but you're not allowed to do laundry on Maid? So who cares that it doesn't take so much effort, but it's unnecessary? So the says, no, we're talking about all those that the Gemara mentions later on the Begimon Bay is that. Chum permitted them to do laundry on Chalam Shemayim, there are certain exceptions. Or Taisa says, this pool that you're making is actually for the Tahara, is to wash the mess, and the Tachrichim, that's why you're making this pool, because again, it has a Chalam purpose, and since it's not such a Sirchi, you're allowed to make this pool on Chalam Shemayim. The Aran, you're also allowed to make a, a coffin. Im HaMais, if it's with the dead person, Machatz in the court, meaning if the, if the mess is there, you're allowed to make a coffin, and to initially cut up the boards for the purpose of making the Aran, and to make the whole thing. But you cannot do it in another courtyard because people are not going to see the mess. They're going to say, oh, this guy's probably doing work on Cholomayim. So it would have to be together with the mess. Yudah Ayis, Yudah says no. He says it's forbidden to bring wood and to make boards for the purpose of making the coffin. Only if he already had boards ready from before Yom But to make the boards that he held, that that's going to be forbidden. What's this that you say now that the dig? Is kuchne kfarsa on Yamtav. I mean, Yudah says, kuchne ar bechapir is digging into the ground, those big catacombs. They used to have like this whole series of caves in the ground and dug into the walls where these graves. But kfarsa is a babinion, whereas a grave is a, on this underground, is, is uh, in the structure. Tama hafa zimel on the bray, say, elen kuchne melek velen kvaras. Kuchne is bechapir, the kuchne are when you dig in these catacombs in the ground, bekvaras babinion, those are in a structure. Uh, the Mishnah said that yes, you cannot dig initially these kvarim. But you can inaugurate the kuchim. Says the Gemara, "Kate's a mechan." What do you mean you inaugurate? What are you doing? What's inaugurating? What's <coughs> shaping it? So maybe Yehudi says, "Shemoya aruch," which really it's chinuch in some level of shaping. Uh, that if it was long, mikatsa, you'd make it shorter. But masnita tana, the price will marich by you can make it longer, marich by make it wider. Which that's one of the reasons why Tzitzit wants to say that. It's talking about where the person already died, because what do you mean, what are you inaugurating it? If you're saying you're making it beforehand, so he says, no, maybe you know who it's for, and therefore you know whenever he's going to die, what how what a what size is, and different. then you could, but again, it's not such a tircha to do that, therefore you would be able to shape it, but to make it initially is a tircha, you say, or they can, I'll do a chala, you shall like. Now the Mishra said, <coughs> you can make this uh, pool, it's like for laundry. It's not, it's not so difficult to make. Says Gemara, my nevrachas. I'm going to read this. It's zubakia. It's like a pond. Says Gemara, I have a time you learn the bright side. Nevrachas babakia. In other words, you see there are two different things. How you say nevrachas is bakia. So my boy, if you tell me some say Rav Kana, yeah, it's not difficult because that's what's called giu bargia, meaning nevrachas is a large pool that you make in the courtyard where you pour all the wastewater. Bakia is is what's called bargia, meaning is a smaller pool that you make near the big one, so that the overflow from the big one flows into the smaller one when the big one is, is full and goes into the smaller one. So yeah, it's really the same thing, just one's bigger, one's smaller. But again, to clarify and explain what Nebrechus is, Bikiyah, that makes sense. <laughs> Mishnah said, well, Aaron, you could also make a coffin, a chalamoid, im hames, if you have it with the corpse, b'chatzer, together in the courtyard. So then it's obvious that you're doing it for the purposes of the mess, then you're allowed to make an Aaron in that, in that chatzer. Which, Teresa brings from the Yashalmi, that uh, this only when it's not well known that a person died. But if, if the person who died is well known, then you're allowed to make a, a coffin for them even in the street, in the marketplace, because everyone knows that it's for the mess, because everyone knows this person passed away. And Taisa says, it would seem for us that we have small kihilois, it's always considered a person for all those who died. Everyone knows, oh, you heard who passed away, oh, yeah, yeah. Everyone's gonna know this guy who's making the coffin is making for the person who passed away, he's not just making uh, some type of a dresser on Chol Shemait. The Gemara says, Tanina, and this that we learned in the Mishnah supports Bahad Tan Rabban. This we learned in the Brisa. Brisa said, Oisin kol tarcha You're allowed to do all the needs of a dead person. Goyz leis sari, you could cut his hair, machaps nixus, you could wash his clothing, Goyz leis aron, you could make him a coffin. If it's minisar and hamadusar, may have yamtiv. If it's from boards that were cut from before yamtiv, meaning if you have prepared boards, then you're allowed to make the coffin because it's a big tircha to make the boards, which that's like a Yehuda. 
Rabbi Shimon Lili Lema, he says, like the Tanakh Hamal Bar Mishnah, he says, no, Af Mavin Eitzim, you could even bring wood, and discreetly in your house, you could cut them up, those bo- woods, into boards, and that would be permitted. That's like the Machlegis that we had mentioned before. So we see that this permissibility of making the coffin uh, from scratch is like what we learned in this price. Then I'll look at the next Mishnah, continuing the Malid Halach again, what are you allowed to do on Chol Shabbat? going from mourning to celebratory, which is like we always go, we're going from the laws of mourning to the laws of, of, uh, of Chasna. Again, also related to the laws of Chol Shabbat. says the Mishnah, in this Mishnah, you're not allowed to get married to women on Chol Shabbat. not a virgin, not a widow, which is, let's say, if someone's brother died without any children, which then the Allah is that he marries his sister-in-law, can't do the Yibam. And the reason is Mesha Simchila, because it's joy to him. Which he's going to explain what's about by being happy on on Cholamai. It's Mizonosh on you know. But that's what he said, because it's, it's joy for him. Now, Abba Machzor is good to but he could remarry his ex-wife, is the, the, one, the woman that he divorced, because that's not so much joy. Now, but, so he's speaking from the Yishalmi, that that's only if he was divorced from Nisuik. But he was only... Arison, not, not what we call engaged, uh, which we do it all at the same time, but from Arison, then you were never intimate with her, then it's like, okay, then there would still be a lot of joy, then that would not be permitted. Moreover, says the Mishnah, related discussions, a woman could make her adornments on Cholamayit, which he wasn't explaining exactly what type of takshit are we talking about. But Huda, he says, one thing she cannot do is lay tough. <coughs> she now let a smear with plaster on her body. Because it's a disgrace for her now on the Chalamayid when she's plastering herself. And the women, they go with all these creams and everything before they go and do some uh, uh, feminine type of uh, <coughs> production. And it, it, right now it's causing her pain. So therefore, she wouldn't be able to do those types of um, <coughs> creams and, and things on, on Chalamayid. Another halacha on the laws of Chalmayid says the Mishnah had yet a, a common person, a regular person, he could sew something in the normal way. But for Uman, a professional, a tailor, machler, he has to do it in the abnormal way. And another halacha says the Mishnah, Mesargim Nesamites. I'm not going to explain exactly what that is, but when you're, when you're putting a, a bed together, you have to do it, you have to string it in a, in a, in a different type of a way. Yisemi says, no, you can't even do sirub, which will explain the Gemara exactly what that is. He says, no, mamatkin, you could only tighten it. But, but to do sirub, um, not necessarily. Now, going to the opening Allah by Mishnah, that we said that you now get married on Chola Shemayim. So the Mishnah said, yeah, because it's a simcha fan. So he must say, because it's joy for him, what's the problem? Like the Mepharish says, what, is simcha forbidden on Yom Tov? What is this? Uh, isn't this the point of, of, of Yom Tev? So the Yudah Meshmol, he says, 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 a well-known statement, Because you're not supposed to intermingle one joy with another joy. In other words, yes, you have to be freilich on Cholamayid, on the Mayid, in the Mayid Alein. That's your joy. But if you're going to get married, you're going to have a different Simcha that's going to be mixing with the Simcha of the Yom Tev. And therefore, <laughs> that's not appropriate. Like Taisa brings from, uh, he says, the Gemara is going to later on tell us it's Xerxes a custom. But Taisa brings from the Yashami that actually dashes this from the Pasik with Lavan and Yaakov. That he told them he wanted, he fooled him with Leah and Rachel. He says, Look, you want Rachel, fine, but Mali Shabu Azais. <clears throat> First, fill this week because you're going to get married to another woman. First, have the Shabbat Rachel's Medefro and then and you get another one. And Taisa says, it's similar to the concept of what we say about any ayis and mitzvahs, chabilas, chabilas. When you're doing a mitzvah, you don't do mitzvahs in bundles. Everyone likes buying bundles. Get this bundle, get that bundle. But you know what I'm saying? We don't do that with mitzvahs. Each one is its own product, and you want your heart to be open for that one mitzvah. Same thing is for simcha. That your heart should be open for be freilich in this, in the yomtiv. What's the yomtiv? And not with a wife, because it's going to be uh, two different simchas. That's one shot. A similar uh, second shot, Dabar Hunami says, because you're going to be leaving. So it's not really so much about the intermingling, but the concern is that you're going to leave the joy of the Yomtev, but you're going to be engaged just in the Simcha of the wife. That's it. You're not even going to realize even. You're like in the bubble. Like you don't even realize what's even going on in the world. Even like You don't even realize the Yomtev. Like you're just, ah, oh, married. Remember those? 
<laughs> and and you're gonna engage in the same kind of life. So Amalei Abayel and Rabbi Yisuf, Rabbi Yisuf, Rabbi Yisuf, how did Rabbi Barapuna this last teaching? But Rabbi Barapuna is the Rabbi, is really Rav's teaching. Because Amar Rabbi Daniel Bar Katina, Amar Rav says, "Menayin she'in da'isim nashem emoy." How do you don't get married to women on chalamoy? You know, because there's a pasuk in the Bar. It says, "Mesamachto bechakecha." You should rejoice with your holiday with your yomtiv. Bechakecha, but lebishchot means in your yomtiv and not in your wife. Meaning the simch has to be in the yomtiv and not in something else. So that's the second interpretation. Third interpretation, Ulamar, he says, He says, because of the effort that you're going to put in for the chasna, it's a lot of tircha. Anyone who knows we made a chasna, it's, it's a huge tircha. And again, the whole point of not doing malacha on chalamai is really as tircha. We don't want you to do matriach. And therefore, you cannot make a chasna on, on the, on the chalamai, which Taisi explains. So when the Mishnah said, Nisha Simcha Hiloi, so how does that, how do you, how do you explain the words of the Mishnah based on what you're saying? The other interpretations were saying, it's a Simcha, and, and that's the problem, because it makes more other Simchas, according to the one that says, of course, it's an effort, you're going to be busy calling the this and that, and the florist, and blah, 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 it's, this, this Mishnah, you know, it's, it's a lot of aggravation, you know what I'm saying, you know, so it's, it's not going to be, for Chalmud, so how is that Manish Simcha? So they said, no, because it's such a Simcha for you, Therefore, you're going to be matriach very much. And the bigger the simcha, the more money, the more uh, white hair you're getting for the simcha. Because it's such a big event, right? So you have to plan it and, and buy in the gowns and whatever. So that's how gufa. Because it's a simcha for him, that's why it's going to be such a tircha. And that's why you can't do it on Chalash A fourth interpretation, Yitzhak Nafam, he says, If we let you get married on Yom Tov, so, who, no one's going to get married all year round. Everyone's going to wait for Chalamay. <clears throat> People like doing it on Sundays. Why? Everyone's off from work. Oh, everyone's going to come to my Simcha. Right? So, if you can make a Chalamay, everyone's off from work. It's the best time. So, yeah, anyone's making Sudas anyway. You're already spending for, for the Yom Tov or whatever. So, everyone will push it off for, for Yom Tov. And then the problem is, People are not going to be mekayim the mitzvah, the first mitzvah time, but that's because for months you could have been married, you could have had the mitzvah pribriyivya, and everyone's going to push it off. So because of the bit of mitzvah pribriyivya, therefore, um, that's that's why. And Taisa says here also. So what does the mitzvah mean? They should simchi loy. Meaning you can be willingly pushing off to the umtiv so that you should be happy or be available because it's something that you really big thing about getting married. I want it to be the best way. And, Everyone wants it to be the best avira. So because such a simcha, he's going to push it off till Cholamite so that everyone will be in the right mood. It's dress night, everyone's uh, groomed or whatever. <clears throat> That's why it's also because of Bidl Piri Now, Taisa brings, interestingly, he says, uh, what about having a... So you tell me that you can't do or oh, get married on the Cholamite because either because Ema Arvin or because of... Uh, it's a tircha. What to make a Sudas Bris Mila? So he says that, yeah, you'd be allowed to make a suddhis bris mila chalamai, because it's not such a simcha. As the Gemara says, you don't make the bracha shah simcha b'vayna, because it's sar for the baby. So because it's sar for the baby, it's not such a happy but time. It's, it's, it's right, right, right. So he says another pshat, that's his other pshat, inami. He said, yeah, but I'm saying you have b'yem shmin, but you also have this halacha here also, b'smach b'chagecha. Only in the, in the chag and not in something else. So <laughs> you have to know. <laughs> That's the first said. So also additionally he says, since it's Man Kavua, it has a sad time, they ate. He says you shouldn't be about them because of that. But he says, what do the suit is pinya ben? That's just a sarchin, if you're allowed to make a pinya ben on, on the Mayid. And he says, Don't tell me that I has a sad time also. He says, Yeah, that's to be doing on the 30th day. What happens if you're not doing on the 30th day? So he says, he says it comes out that yeah, it would seem like that you could because it's only considered ma'arvat simcha the simcha only if you're like a chasna. That's a big simcha. That's something that you can't do on the Obviously, you're, you're allowed. Right. Mm, yeah. Right. It's not, it's not as big as the simcha, <clears throat> but uh, chasna, that's where the halacha is primarily said. Now, the Gemara asks Meisve, the Gemara asks on all of the opinions. We learned in Abraisa, it says, Kol Elu Sha'amra Surah Lisa B'mayim. All these that we said that um, the Dalai get engaged. Oh, it actually says, no, to get married on, on Cholomayid. So you get to the of Testament of Mutar and Lisa Erev Regal. But they are allowed to get married Erev Yom Tov. In other words, initially, what's the Kiddush of the Brisa? Initially, they're allowed to get married on Erev Yom Tov, even though the Sheva Brachas is going to be throughout Yom Tov. 
That's okay. You're going to be having the Tircha of the Sheva Brachas. You're going to be having the Simcha of the Sheva Brachas. So how can you get married every Yomtiv? But you're going to be Ma'arvin Simcha with Simcha. So the Gemara says, Loi Kash, not about any one of them. Lamandam, Simcha, according to the first two interpretations that were saying it's because of, you know, you're Ma'arvin Simcha with Simcha, or you're going to leave this Simcha, so you're going to leave this So, Iker Simcha, the primary joy of getting married, is Chad Yom, was one day. And the rest of the days is not considered Ma'arvin mm-hmm. Simcha with Simcha. It's already, Nuch Tachas, Nuch Tachas, already, Shem Shem Bruch, it's already, it's maybe a little fight here, a little fight there, it's already... The, the main simcha is the first day. So it's not going to have a problem with simcha simcha. According to the one that says that you can't do it on the Chalamai because of the effort. The primary effort of a man, of a chasm is chadiyam, is one day, is the day of the wedding. After that, everyone's like, okay, or whatever, the first Shevrach, you got Nebuch, the, the first Shevrach night, it's already, you know, it's already overblown already. And Lamanda Misham Bitl Pibri, according to the one that says, it's a problem if we let you get married on, on Yom Tiv because everyone's going to push it off and then they're not going to be fulfilling the first mitzvah in the Torah of having children. No, it's not true because L'chad Gimel L'mashi in this Shnafshe. For one day period of Erev Yom Tiv, people are not going to push off. In other words, since you're telling me that the only time they can have it is in Erev Yom Tiv, so a person's not going to wait till the Yom Tiv because maybe something's going to happen and maybe the, the, the shekel macho, or whatever this is, the makeup lady is not available, if something happens last second, they have Yom Tish, she's going out of town, and then, oh, the chasla, we can't do it, and you're not going to have to do it every regal, and then, you tell me you can't do it the whole Yom Tiv, so a person wouldn't, won't push it off for that one day opportunity. I mean, if you're allowed to do a chalamoy, okay, a four or five day, whatever it is, you have a, have a nice amount of time, that you could pick, if it doesn't happen on Monday, we'll do it on Tuesday, whatever, but it's a, it's a fair little time, it's a great, great opportunity. But if, for Arab Yom Tiv, that's not difficult about the Amma that you can about the Rebbe because for that one day, it's not worth it for a person to take that chance and run the risk. If it's a snowy day or whatever, and it's a people can say, oh, it's not a good day, that's it's not worth it. And therefore, that Mandama also, you're not going to have that problem because you won't push it off for that reason. And therefore, yeah, you're allowed to have the Chasna, Arab Regal, because the Imam and Simcha, the Simcha is not going to be in the gay. It's not going to be a problem with Tirka for the Shabbat Brachas, and it's not going to be a problem about the Rebbe. Thank you for anything.